everyone, and welcome to Doctor Who Cares. Well, I'll tell you who cares. My co-host right there, Matt Edwards. How you doing, Matt? That's right. I do care. He I does care. Please. I care. We all care because we love Doctor Who over here. So this is our little Doctor Who talk we're going to be doing, which is titled, of course, Doctor Who Cares, which I'd like to give a shout out to my buddy Jimmy out there. Thanks for the, uh, you know, the idea for for this title of course he knows what i'm talking about but um i also uh for this episode our first episode we're going to do here we're going to talk about multi-doctor stories and we got the fez man how you doing fez man fez man he was the one that gave us the idea to do this episode so we're gonna do it yeah he asked a question uh what, you know what was one of our you know our favorite um uh, multi-doctor story because when you pick the scab sometimes the scab likes to pick you oh yes it does yeah. Welcome to the scab. But, um, you know, it, it, it's a lot to consider because there's, you know, there's a few. There's not many multi-doctor stories. Now, I know there's a, a ton of audio and, you know, uh, book editions, but I'm not really familiar with those. You know, our buddies like, you know, Dr. Freedom and Graham McLaughlin. Tim, I know them guys, they're, they're all big. And so maybe one day we'll get together with them guys and just get, you know, get a heads up on, you know, what went on in some of those stories. And I know I, I'd love to start reading the, or uh, listen to the audios. I think I'm gonna, you know, but it does take a little time, but you know, maybe eventually, yes. but let's get into this, Matt. Let's now, before we start, yes, before we start, I would like to say, isn't it always great when you see a multi-doctor story, when you see two doctors or more on the screen interacting with each other? Yes. Is she, you kind of have an interesting dynamic that goes on between all of them. You know, sometimes some doctors might not get along with others. That's true. For right. example, six hated oh. being five. But then by the time the, uh, you know, the next doctors came, they thought they were the best one, you know. There you so go. he kind of has differing opinions of himself depending on who you ask. He's got the ego of the doctor, you know. But they all seem to think they're the most superior yeah. in their own certain way. And they all deserve to think like that. Even though they're the same same man, just different bodies, you know, basically. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure, you know, for him hindsight's twenty twenty, you know, maybe you realize that hey, in retrospect, I probably didn't enjoy myself in that body as much. That's true. That's that true. is, of course, unless you ask Stephen Moffat or Russell T. Davis, in which case, the doctor doesn't want to go. He'll always remember when the doctor was him, because some each of one of them has to be go. just some same. of them. Yeah, some of them weren't ready to go. Some of them we didn't want to let go. You know, uh, but that's the whole yeah. dynamic of Doctor Who. I mean, that's the one thing that this show has that no other show really has is where you have the the main character being able to change like that, you know, change yeah, the pace and true. keep the show going, which is awesome. But let's I'm, sure, that. I'm sure Peter Davidson didn't want to die. Didn't want to drink that bat's breast milk, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's begin here. We'll begin with the um with the first multi doctor story entitled The Three Doctors. Simple title, simple enough. Now here we have you know, a jumble of the first uh three doctors gathered together. Now this is one of the ones that you, you got to see, right, Matt? Yes. And they did this for the I believe it was the tenth anniversary at the time. Yeah, just about, yeah. This is roughly uh yeah, nineteen seventy two ish. Now yeah. in this you know, in this story basically you have a you know, a dilemma. Okay, so the the big dilemma in this story is Omega. Who we have not seen in the new series as have, of yet. See, but did we? Have we not? Maybe we've seen them and it's just, you know what I mean? Maybe and in the background, seen. there are those the mega symbols yeah. all throughout Series 7. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, this introduces Omega, uh, which is uh, one of the, you know, basically like the first time Lord, you know what I mean? So you get, like, you get that whole backstory, you know, of him being pretty much in a like crazy dimension trying to get out you know and the doctor needed help well, well not the doctor well more like the time lords you know wanted the doctor to you know uh solve this problem of course because they always call upon him they figure why not mix in a couple extra doctors so that's where we get the uh second doctor 
and a bit of the first doctor. Now, William Hartnell was, uh, you know, he's pretty old during his time of his life. So, you know, some, he wasn't actually on screen with the other two. It was more in like a, you know, like a TV tube, kind of like, you know, telling them orders and stuff, you know, talking to them that way. Now, what yep. did you, now what did you, well, what did you think with the, you know, the interaction of the, uh, of the first three doctors? I really liked it. Well, I guess we could call this more along the lines of the two and a half doctors, no. all things considered. Yeah, it would have been nice if Hartnell was able to, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, there, I definitely didn't know. discredit Hartnell. I mean, yeah. obviously you could tell he wanted to be there. I mean, the, the legend goes that he was super excited to be there. But what I thought was so interesting was that it wasn't really a joyous occasion that they all had to work together. You know what I mean? Right. They, they didn't particularly like each other or feel happy seeing each other again. Exactly. I, th I think as far as the, the, the third to the second, I think the third kind of resented being the second. Yeah. Because... You know, that doctor, Pertwee's doctor was all business, mm -hmm. whereas the second doctor would kind of wisecrack and get in the way. So right. I guess it kind of felt like he was an inferior incarnation to him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, yeah. But, by contrast, the second doctor kind of probably felt that he was a little bit too up, uptight and not just willing to relax. Yeah, well, I kind of, I like to do uh, I like their interaction definitely. Um, yeah, it was a good dynamic. A little, little abrasive, but then you know they got then they got it. Like at the end when they you know pretty much you know defeated Omega. Yeah. Um, you know. And there there was actually um, a pretty good gag in this one involving uh, a Beatles gag where, where uh, she says, "Oh, this is from a song by the Beatles," and he goes, "How does it go?" Like he's about to play it on the clarinet. Would you please be quiet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, me being a Beatles fan, just recorder, know that, yeah. just to know that the second I just said, "How does it go?" I want to learn who are these Beatles. <laughs> that's pretty epic. But yeah, I thought all in all, good, you know, good, great, great episode. Now, if you guys, yeah. you know, out there, now again, I don't want to get too technical on these episodes because just in case, because I know newer fans might not have got a chance. It also was the yet. first episode, if I'm not mistaken to launch the doctor kind of back in the direction of his roots where he learned how to fly the TARDIS again mm. at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. They gave him the component he needed to fix it. Yeah. So he was able to visit planets again. So right. it was kind of, that was kind of the perfect, on an anniversary episode, it was kind of that way of, again, setting the shot for the future. There you go. There you go. Which you will see a running theme up in a lot of these episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you will. But, yeah, great one. I think we'll do our pick after we're done going through them. Yeah. Now, this brings us to the televised five doctors, which is, you know, one of the ones, you know, that a lot of people talk about. I mean, now you have five of the doctors together. Now, did we really have all five of them together? No. Sadly, we didn't because... We didn't really get Tom Baker in this one. Now we did get some um, shots of him from, I believe, believe from uh, the Shada, the Shada episode, which is a really cool episode, by the way. Even though it was never mm -hmm. done, but you can find the uh, the animated one. And somebody, I think Graham was telling me or or Brian that um, there's a, an audio with the Eighth Doctor, I believe, doing this in Shada. But that's, yes, that's totally different. We'll, we'll have to do one on Shada. Too. There are also several different novelizations. Right, but now let's just get back to this. Now the Five Doctor, sadly, um, Tom Baker wasn't able to be in this one. Um, you know, not that he wasn't able. He just he chose not right. to. Right, and we and regrettably. As we'll find out, we weren't able to really have um, the first Doctor William Hartnell, Hartnell in it. Well, in the beginning, where he did his little his little speech, but the um, the, the first Doctor was played by Richard Richard Hartnell Hern, Herndell. And that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of interesting because William Hartnell, you know, Bill is. I mean, I think, you know. William Hartnell and Richard Herndall, it's kind of like a similar name almost. He did a good job playing, the, you know, the first doctor, you know. Um, yeah. Now, this this is a difference. Now, this story is basically taking um, time in, or taking place during the, 
the fifth doctor's uh, era. And this is, you know, this is another one we get that we get, we got the master in this episode too, which is cool. Now what, now this is one you saw too, right? So you want to give yes. me some, uh, some love on it. Tell me what you Well, not only episode. that, Mike, but what we also get to see in this episode is we get to see some of the hierarchy of Gallifrey. Mm-hmm. We get to see the uh, Cybermen. Mm-hmm. Really, really, we get to see that weird protector of that cave that could go lightning fast. Uh, I forget his name. One of my favorites. That's the uh, Raston Warrior robot, man. Now, this is a creature or robot, whatever, that we have not yet seen again. Now, again, I heard they have had the uh, Raston Warrior robot in some of the audios, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Free, the Dr. Freedom was talking about it before, and, and I think Graham was too. So that's cool. I would love to see that. Because you remember how quick that dude was? <laughs> yeah. He killed them. He killed the, the Cybermen were coming up and their heads are coming off and shit, like stuff's squirting out of them and shit, man. It was crazy. Again, I, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, plot wise anyway. But not only mm-hmm. do we get, you know, five doctors in here, well, four plus some, you know, footage of uh, Tom Baker's doctor. But, I mean, we've got companions. We've got a return of some of the companions, man. Like, what did you think of that? That was pretty good. We got to see Susan, who ironically just brushed out the fact that he's with her grandfather for some reason. It wasn't re- Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, it wasn't really... Like, didn't, it didn't really acknowledge it. Just yeah, sort of did, was you know, there. You're right. I did notice that, too. Yeah, it wasn't like a big deal or anything, but yeah, it was it was cool. Well, at, at least it didn't botch that opportunity as bad as another special, which we'll get to. Well, yeah. We but, also get Rassilon, basically, in this one, too. Yes, for the first time, I believe. Yeah, so that's... This, this, this is to my point that I made earlier, where you see where it seems like with each one of these anniversary episodes, they do a good job of adding something deeper to the show's history and setting up a new direction for it to go in by the end. Or just sort of like a, a new way of looking at the show right, with each right. of these anniversary specials. Right. Which you're going to see more and more as we go along. Yeah, but, definitely. You know, I really did like this one, but where it kind of faltered for me is you kind of see that some of the actors that played the Doctors, as good as we all, I mean, we all love Patrick Cotton and John Pertwee, but to their credit, you know, in all fairness, they were getting a little bit older. You could kind of see the gray starting to show up on Patrick Cotton's hair. I mean, and I think that the way the script went, they were never really all together until right at the end. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you kind of got to see in the three doctors where, they kind of had this screen time and this dynamic working together where they could bounce off each other. You never really saw that. They were all just kind of separate for most of the special, weren't they? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty they much. never got the chance to really interact with each other and bounce off at each other. And the biggest missed opportunity in that was that you never got to see any of the old doctors really interact with Peter Davis and the current incumbent at the time. Mm. So... Other than that little ending sequence, of course, but yeah. I really feel that that's one of the weaker things, man, where they didn't take advantage of, you know, the teamwork aspect, the dynamic of working together. Well, you yeah. know, and let them, yeah, they had a just lot to balance I mean, off each other. It's a lot to work with when you got like four, you know, you got four, four doctors really, you know, and a, you know, companions all around, you know, to make yeah. it all fit in, you know, a, a story like that. But you know what? I, I think all in all, it was cool. And we get, you know, again, we get the master in it, which which is always awesome. You know? And we don't get to see the evilness of uh, uh, the Chancellor. Mm. It was a pretty good villain. Like, you know, a lot of the Time Lords are pretty much, um, how do you put this, dicks in a way. You know, but I but I do wish we can get. I'm not gonna say every time Lord is a dick, but you know what? They come off a bit dicky towards the doctor. Anyway, that just wants to seem like he just wants to help people, and they they kind of curse him. But yet when they need him, it's like, yo, we need you, bro, over here. You know, but and he helps out because that's what kind of you know time Lord he is. Okay, now mm-hmm. now we got the next one. 
I lost your video. The next one we have is the two doctors. Now this one I did not see, so you're on your own on this one. Okay. Now the two doctors is a six doctor episode or a yes. six doctor story. Um, Colin Baker, who I I did see a little bit of it, but not much to really give an opinion on the episode. Yeah. Um, this one you have uh, um, the uh, six doctor and the uh, and Perry. Well, he's with Perry. You know, Perry Brown in this one. He meets the second doctor in this episode. This story. What an odd pairing, you know. You know, I don't think he looked too bad. I know some some of us were saying, oh, "I wish he would have dyed his hair a little like darker," you know, because you really saw the the gray in it or the white, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And Jamie Jamie McCribbin, he looked pretty good. I mean, you know, for all those years ago to pop up back, you know what I mean? You know, um. It was pretty yep. cool, you know, seeing him again, because um, I think Jamie's a great companion um, from the uh, Second Doctor stories. Um, mm. But basically, yeah, basically what you have is them two meeting up. It's the sun. It's, it's the baddie in this one's pretty much the uh, Suntaran. You know, you got the Suntarans working on a, you know, a device and all that. Doctor's pretty much, you know, trying to get him to stop. You got this. Cute, you got this crazy character called. Um, shock eye which is really this crazy dude um i don't know what to make of him he's a crazy like i don't want to call him a cannibal because he's a different race and human is that the dude with the orange skin but he or? does have it yeah he does have a taste for human flesh you know there's funny scenes um that come up to me when the when the uh when the, the second doctor in the restaurant um, when he starts eating all that food and he has to, tr and he's trying to, you know, whip out, I guess, inter I forget what they call their money. It's uh, some kind of intergalactic, intergalactic fucking credits or something. And the waiter's all like, you know, it's, it, was, it was a funny scene with him in the restaurant. Um, this one, this one falls on, uh, some people like it. Some people don't. You know, I like it. I think it's a cool one because, again, it's Colin Baker, and he gets to at least meet, you know, um, the second doctor. At least he gets to meet a doctor. I always thought that was cool. Um, yeah. and, I know that I know that Colin said that it was a joy working with him. Yeah. And I know uh, Patrick Trotton really did also enjoy, you know, being a part of it. I think originally he was kind of hesitant to come back. Mm-hmm. For the three doctors, but he wound up enjoying it so much, apparently, yeah. that, that he was more than happy to do it the, the next two times. So it's a cool story. Plus, this one where you have the Centaur. Now, see, these are the, the Centaurans that I like, which I do. I have mine here, which are basically like this, like this one, which are like these. Now, these are the um, the tall, the taller. The Centaurans weren't really known for being short until the new new era of um, Doctor Who, where they, for some reason, they made them really short. I'm not really sure why, but they used to be pretty tall, and they had their, you know, pretty much their similar heads, but in their, you know, in their helmets, which are always always awesome. But um, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it was a cool story. I mean, it's definitely worth worth a watch. One thing is, this is also the last time that we would see. Patrick Trotton in an episode of Doctor Who. This was actually made, if I recall, just a short while before he passed. That I'm not 100% sure when he passed after that. That I'm not really sure. At a doctor, I mean, at a sci fi convention, no less. Yeah. I forget what year that was. I think, the was, year, I think, yeah, the year this one came out was, I think, 85. I'm not sure when he died. I don't know. I believe it was the day just before his birthday, as I think it was said that he had mentioned that he wanted to do a screening of the Ice Warriors to celebrate mm. his birthday at his house. So, it's always a shame, though. A little know. bit of trivia there. But yeah. uh, you know what? At least he got to come back for Doctor Who a couple times, man, before he well, passed yeah. away. And it was, you know what? It's more of. To me, the two doctors, it's kind of funny. It, 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 it does have its funny scenes, you know. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away. Again, you know, for some of you newer guys out there, I don't want to ruin it. But, you know, you got to definitely give that one a look out 
or give it not look out, give it a look. You mm-hmm. know, if you can. Then I guess we might as well um Darryl do you this see, one. my friends, for every good special, once in a while there seems to come along a one bad egg. Yeah, you now know? We're about what? No. Now wait, before we get okay, to this yeah. bad egg, I would like to clarify that we're not just trying to be blind haters. We're usually positive guys. You know, we don't like to we never like to bash an episode of Doctor Who. Right. I no, mean, no, every no, every episode no. of Doctor Who usually has there's good, good qualities. There's good in every episode, okay? I'll, I'll yeah. say that. There is. And, 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 let's and I will it. say that, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I will say that before this project was announced, at the time they were hoping to do a, a good, you know, anniversary switch, but, but then the budget got cut for whatever reason. You know, this was kind of, oh. this was Pretty. kind of, after the official cancellation of the first series, if I'm not mistaken, well, this was a yeah, this was a special special. I'm not sure if it was was it one of the like children for need, or, you know, one of those specials. It was a special for something. It was for children and yeah, need. for raising money or something. So it was like you know one of those deals. But dimensions in time. Yes. Okay. Co-starring the cast of EastEnders. Yeah, um, you, you pretty much, yeah, you had your, well, with Doctors, all right, you had the, well, Fourth Doctor, Fourth Doctor pretty much was the narrator. <laughs> can, but, can you really call him the Fourth Doctor? Well, you know, you had the, uh, well, and I, well, I think we should at least try to go in the, to the right, plot you know, as well. The baddie in this definitely is the, um, is the Ronnie, okay, she's pretty much the, the baddie baddie, but you did have your Doctors, um, you had Third Doctor, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Yeah. So you had all those. You didn't. You know. Trout. Trout was passed by by at this point. But you, yeah, you know, you got a. You got a. Was able to. You got a bunch. Uh, you got a bunch of companions. You know. You got a bunch of your favorite companions. I got. You know. You got Sarah Jane, Leela, Perry Brown, Matt's favorite Mel Bush. Um, Ace was in it. Susan was in this one. The Brigadier was in this one. A lot of word Romana was in this one. So you would think with you know, hold on though, you you would th- you would think with all those ingredients, think, right? But, but that's what like a lot of people were saying. I know. A lot of people are saying, Well, why not the fiftieth bring all these people? But it but it I think it's hard to make a really good story with so many actors in it, like that you wanna see. Like at once. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. This wasn't such a good story not a memorable story whatsoever. Is it, it worth the watch? It wasn't even really a story. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a mix. It's just like, but I, I guess, but you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We should probably get into the plot, if you can couple that. You see, this, this was meant to be a crossover between Doctor Who and the other popular British show at the time, East Enders. And now, Doctor Who was basically canceled at the time, and they wanted to do a real anniversary thing but they didn't because we see me in the cheapskates they were cut their budget mm-hmm. and so what ended up happening was i don't know what jackass was sitting there in the creative meeting but somebody had the testicular fortitude to speak up and say hey how about we just cross the, the two shows together what did we get we got a mismatch of rushed overhyped overcompensating, bad scripts, bad acting, bad special effects. Everything is just all around bad, and I'm not even trying to bash Doctor yeah, It's just it's, that bad. It's corny enough to just to watch it for a laugh, but I'll tell you what, if you haven't seen it, watch. It's on YouTube. Watch the blooper reel of Dimensions in Time, because that yeah. shit is funny. That's where you have, um, the th- well, you have, <laughs> um, a co- wait, I'm trying to think now. I haven't seen it in a while. I think, I think it was, uh, was it, was it Pertwee? Yeah, it was part. it was Pertwee where it, I, I don't know if he was messing up his lines or something, but he was getting really pissed off, you know, where he kept, and some were saying he was drunk during that time or something. I don't know, 
But to check out the blooper reel. I haven't seen it in a while. I believe it was Pertwee that was getting pissed. Um, but give it a look. Not, it's funny. Not, yeah, and the, the plot itself is just horrendous, too. You have Narani trying to get, you know, some kind of menagerie. Like, she's got a Cyberman, Cyberman head. Yeah. Something else. And then she's got the heads of the, devil. the first and second doctor who basically are just... You know, supposedly trapped in the time vortex, but they illustrate this by two badly rendered CGI heads. <laughs> so then the fourth doctor interrupts. Attention, my children! Look out for Ronnie. She's evil. She even hates children. Oh yeah. no, she hates children. But yeah. it's not even the fourth doctor because I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But he's wearing this kind of weird box fourth doctor outfit. <laughs> I mean, it looks like all maroon and velvet, right? Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it's a bit odd. It's, it, it's not his hat, and it's behind a badly rendered green screen. <laughs> it's just all bad. And the worst thing about these episodes is that you never see the doctors together because the dimensions are supposed to be messed up, mm -hmm. and so you never see. <laughs> You never see them all together. It just sort of flips between this doctor and that doctor. You never see them all together at one time. It's just it, it's a it's a it's a mix up of a mess. I, I don't know what what's, to, a, what's even more stupid is the fact that they put Susan in it, right? No. And she even meets the sixth doctor and she goes, "Oh, you're not my father. You're not my grandfather." No emotion. No, like granddad, you're back. All right, let's. let's... Like, no, you're not my father. <laughs> Let's move on, Darth Vader. Sorry. Now, <laughs> or Luke. Now, My bad. I guess I, I I count the, I'm going to count this one as a multi story. I'm going to count Time Crash. I'll count Time Crash because you have two different doctors. It was a special. Uh, well, hold on. Like a couple before minutes. We, long. Before we get to that one, I think there's one we're missing chronologically, technically. We're missing. I guess we could use this because it does bear repeating. It's, it's still a multi doctor story. It it's actually a fan film that Pertwee did, which was the last thing he did before he passed yeah. away. Where you kind of got to see that there was a doctor before him. You know. All right. All right. I know what you're saying. Uh, but I'll... I mean, I, I haven't seen that, but you know, I'm just pointing it out that that was there. You can find it on YouTube. I forget what it's called, but it's there. It's interesting if you want to watch it. Right. Well, yeah, so, I don't want to count the fan-made stuff. Or, and I don't want to like count the eighth Doctor movie, even though there's two Doctors in it. But I just want to get to the ones that like, I don't know, where two different Doctors are working together, kind yeah, of. Yeah. So let's let's move to Time Crash, which is only a couple minutes long. Mm -hmm. But then you got um, the fifth Doctor and the uh, tenth Doctor, which is great. Which is funny, man. Comedic, right? It was funny. It was funny yeah. their interaction, you know, with the specs and you know, like some of the things he'd say, like you know. It was only a couple minutes. But that, this doctor didn't even really hate him, uh, that doctor. Oh, no, no, no. He said you were like, my oh, favorite. Oh, you. Yeah. Yeah, he said you, you were my favorite. Yeah, 10 said that to 5, you know. But would but would 12 say that to 5, you know what I mean? But you that's, never know. That's, but that's, 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 but the I mean, funny thing, like with the glasses being mentioned, that he only wears them to look smart, you know, because yeah. you can catch a couple episodes where the fifth doctor does put on, he does put on glasses rarely, but occasionally, you know, he has. To look smart, you know, in a way, I guess, is what he's thinking. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was cute. It was funny, man. It was funny. Mm -hmm. That was a funny one. And I'm not really going to count. I mean, yeah, we got it, some. It was touching, too. You yeah, had the kind of, you know, the, I tried to be important in everything, but then I was you and I was doing all this fun stuff. And Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it does bear mentioning that I'm sure some of that was fan wankery thrown in by David Tennant because, you know, he's basically talking to his. Father in law, but we'll ignore the nepotism. Hmm. True. Okay, Matt, I know you've seen this one. We're going to skip. We're going to skip over clones and Meta Crisis Doctor and all that. I don't want to get all into that, but you guys know what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's just get right. Let's just get right to the name of the doctor. Passing that right to you, bro. The name of the doctor? Yeah. Well, Assuming we're talking about the name of the doctor and not the 50th, which is the day of the doctor, we can talk the name of the doctor. 
Um, not really well, a multi. Not, oh, I get not, not really a multi adopter story, but you do get to see when he's in the time stream and you got the echoes running everywhere. Yeah, you know? I guess the, like more. I was thinking of the. I guess seeing her at the end. I mean, yep. because that's the, like the dun, 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 like moment. You know what I mean? Like you're like, yeah, who yeah. the hell is this guy? Like, I mean, that, knew, that, that was, that I was mean, one of the. That was one of the rare times where I loved our buddy Dr. Freeman, but I, I kicked myself because I I used to I used to spoil myself, man. Like I used to be like a really big spoiler spot and I would just listen to every spoiler. So I didn't I did know about the John Hurt thing before it happened that he was likely gonna be in the city in some capacity. You just didn't know. Right. Like, you thought that there would be a doctor that, you know, wore a combination of all the doctor's clothing right. and this and that. You really didn't know how they were going to do this whole in-between doctor thing. So yeah. to, actually, to actually see it on screen and to see the expression on his face, though, and to see how, how they ended it, like, oh, you know, you're the guy who broke the promise. I mean, to see that, to see yeah. the direction they were going, it's like, whoa. So they're going that oh, route. Yeah, like, right. I mean, and then he did have, like, Clara interacting with some of the doctors, like, you mm -hmm. know, too. It, it, it through, through some kind of less than impressive green screen, right, but, you right. know, some of those episodes weren't HD back then, yeah. so I can, I mean, I can give it a pass. Yeah, they did their best. It was kind of like, you know, them scenes were, like, short and sweet, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you kind of wanted more, but, you know, they gave us that, which I think was cool, and I think it gave us one of the greatest, it was probably the best Doctor Who cliffhanger for me and, yeah you know that you know what made us yeah, like oh, think man. about how many more months we had to oh, wait dude. beyond that it you was an excruciating waiting, month dude yeah <laughs> I know. and all the rumors and all the fake uh news articles oh, oh, dude God. that was just terrible all the chicken now, monsters and everything you see for all you casual fans you don't realize being spoiler hounds like us if you're really involved you don't realize all the stuff that goes into waiting for all this stuff. The stuff you read about online, the false hope. There was even rumors that Omega was going to be in the 50th. Remember that? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, like, Omega. We were just, um, and then, like, even waiting for a simple trailer, dude, that turned into, like, warfare amongst certain <laughs> wow. people. But we won't, we won't the, get into that. Had, you yeah. know, everybody, we all had speculations. I know we were all excited. You know, yeah. yeah, some of us were thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, an Omega story or something like that, which would have been cool. But, you know, maybe that's still on the back burner for eventually. Yeah, and then there was all the debate about, are the classic doctors going to be in it? Are they not going to be in it? What's going to happen? Are they going to do a mini episode? Right. Which, I get, which so I guess before we get to the 50th, yeah. we can we could talk about the five-ish doctors. True. The five-ish doctors. Now, the five-ish doctors... It's pretty much a comedy parody kind of thing. It was funny. It, it, you know, you got you got these actors. Well, that play doc. You know, the doctor. Um, in a in a funny light, like you know, where they're they're trying to, you know, get themselves into the fiftieth anniversary. You know, then you got nonchalant, like fuck, you get the, uh, you got so many things going on. And well, with the with the um, oh, what am I thinking? With the the scene with the sheets, how they like they kind of, because it because it made you wonder was was that really? Did, did we ever you know, find out if they were really I don't under? No, that's that's what I was trying to say. Like I don't know if they did or not, man. I don't but know. There, I mean, I think the biggest and most funniest part of the whole thing was seeing Stephen Moffat bash himself yeah, for not yeah, including them, yeah, playing with his figures. Well, another but, funny, but you know what I mean. Like Paul he had was funny in it too, because he seemed like uh, he didn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, you know, yeah. that was cool on it, too. And then Moffitt's having that dream, like, who's going to be in the 50th? And then I don't know where Adric, it's me, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> that was cool. Adric, point no. Well done, well done. That was, that was, it was funny, man. It was definitely yeah. funny. I did enjoy it. Then that. you got to see them actually in the current TARDIS, mm -hmm. in their costume. So it kind of was, in a way, it was kind of, it kind of was putting them in the, in yeah. the new show, so to speak, because they were Everything, on set. But it was, it was, it was, that was done by uh, Peter Davison. 
Yeah. And it was it was not, it was cool, man. It was funny. They like came out of nowhere, like really, because we were all thinking of other things going on. This came out, and it's like, whoa, where did this come from, man? Yeah, and there and there was, was funny, all this. Man. I can remember all this negativity going on, man. Like, oh, how can the BBC not include the classic doctors? You know what a bummer. Well, yeah, you know, because I mean, for some for well, some people, well, for fine. some people, you know, the fact that there wasn't any classic doctors was a bit of a bummer for them for the year. But to see that they included that was just, yeah, but you know, the, for me, that was yeah, at the end of the day, Dude, at the end of the day, what they gave us for a 50th is awesome. Mm -hmm. They gave us the Return of the Eighth Doctor, dude. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's nothing to poke. That's That was completely yeah. freaking awesome. And they yeah. didn't even have to do that. They didn't have like to do they, that at all. That was completely <laughs> superfluous. They and did Paul that. McGann, Paul McGann looked awesome as the Eighth Doctor in that. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, as soon as I, I watched that little bit a couple minutes like so slow you know what i mean because i kept pausing it and yeah. it looked so good and i wanted him back like i wanted him to do his own like you know series of being because he looks so cool as the doctor again you know i'll quote you i'll, I'll use a quote that you said and during the first reaction of that trailer you said this and i'm not trying to be wrong anyway but that's this was your first reaction when you were asked about it well I think it's safe to say we all have a bit of duty in our pants this morning. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. I think we all changed our pants <laughs> after viewing that, man. That was awesome. That was given to us for the 50th. Then we got um, we got the five-ish doctors, which is funny. We got the audio, the light at the end, which was an, an awesome audio story that I actually listened to. You yes, know. even tonight, who doesn't typically listen to audio I don't really get a chance to, but I figure, all right, I'm going to listen to this one. For, and that was awesome story for, the, you know, for the 50th. Oh. And then it brings us to boom, boom, boom. The, the day event. of the doctor. Ba -da, ba -da, da -da. Finally, we ba -da, got, da -da. finally, man, like, guys, we got the day of the doctor after all this, like, waiting and wondering and this and that and this and that. We got the day of the doctor, man. And, dude, nothing was so hush-hush. No. Like, this episode was, like, we knew, like, Billy Piper was in it. We had no idea. No, we had no idea what she was going to be doing in it. Wow, yeah. man. He had John Hurt going in. The, he, I can't. David Tennant. He had Smith in it. And go ahead, Matt. No, the, the, there was nothing, nothing to go on for months. Nothing. And people sweated, and they sweated. What are they? What are they going to do? Because this, for fifty years, this show means a lot to a whole oh, lot of freaking people. We were man. sweating like like Rocky running up the steps, man. Like we were, man. We were. I know we were, because we were so excited, you know. To... And not just excited, but we. I mean, a lot of people, and I'm not even ends, but some people were like genuinely, okay, BBC. If you screw this up, if you screw this up, BBC, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Some, people, some people yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. But, but look what we got, dude. Tell tell me about the episode, man. Yeah. Tell me what Matt Edwards. Creamed yeah, over this dude, episode, dude. I when that day finally came, we were on zero hour. None of us had gotten any sleep. I remember that because we're. I mean, Mike and I were in a we were in a group with our buddies. Oh yeah. It's 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 when when 15th anniversary happened. It was D Day. It was D Day. Everybody was scrambling to like get their shit ready to watch it. Yeah. And uh, I can remember having our I'm trying to find the network screen, and. Mike was like, well, Mike was like, fuck this, I'm going to go offline for like an hour so nobody swells anything for me. Right. So, so you would just come off the grid. I'm freaking scrambling everywhere trying to find a working stream that doesn't lag. Right. And then the 50th starts, and it lags, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to miss the 50th because I can't find a working stream. And then all of a sudden, thank God, I get the bright idea to turn off Skype makes it run smoother, and then say for the first five or so minutes, dude, I sat and watched it all the way through. I enjoyed it. I mean, I thoroughly did enjoy it. Everything about that episode, and I know it didn't get its fair share or criticism at the end, but everything about this episode was 
doctors aside, just a labor of love to the whole series and everything it is built. I can go back and watch that special and still today find something new that I didn't notice that they threw in there. Right. Like, even down to what Claire was writing on the chalkboard at the beginning to the, the time on the clock when she's leaving at 513, which was when the original episode was broadcasted. Mm-hmm. Being back at Colonel School, they got the original opening. They had River's Shoes in the library. <laughs> they had Captain Jack's Vort X Manipulator. Oh, yeah. They had the Dalek gun. They <sighs> had every piece of Doctor Who memorabilia you could think of thrown in there. They had references thrown in Zygons. Uh, Arthur the Horse, you know, made an appearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Susan, Susan made the either kind of got where uh, Claire was actually kind of wondering that, like, who is this girl? Mm-hmm. But then, so brilliantly, just as she's about to like wonder who is it, then the doctor interrupts. <laughs> so you have to wonder, was he kind of trying to keep her away from that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was just a little bit you mentioned, not even. Yeah. Everything even, I just I mean, mentioned I mean, in that one breath was just... The, the oh, yeah, I know. It, that, that's that just way. a little bit it gave us. It gave, then it gave us, like, you know, David Tennant and Matt Smith and John Hurt working together, which was cool. Well, the whole thing with uh, John Hurt with Billy Piper was cool. Got to see Capaldi's eyes dude, and his look on his dude. face. You got to see the look. And, and not just Capaldi, dude, but everything's awesome. building up to that. Everything building... The moment you realize that I can't use this, yeah. I'm not going to blow up my own people. What's not you know? expecting that, yeah. Capaldi, and, man, wow. Got a little glimpse. A little now, glimpse. If we, could just, if we could just call up for a minute, what do you think about the dot rebooting everything and choosing to find a way out of it? Do you think it takes away from the doctor's character to kind of choose to save them rather than, you know, for them to reboot it, what it, what to say that he never actually did? Do you think it hurts the doctor? No, I don't think it does. Cause I don't think that the, I don't. I'm. It's hard to say because I, I didn't they do it in a way where the doc, the previous doctor w- won't wouldn't remember anyway. He'll right. think he did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess it doesn't really change anything. Cause I guess it was like meant to be. I guess that was what it's, he was It's meant like to do, showing you know? us what actually happened. Yeah, but I know, you're, I know what you're but saying. But the argument I get from people is, well, it takes away from the impact of there was no right decision. If he did the hard thing, it has to live with that. But nope, he didn't really do it. Everything's fine. You know, happy ending. Cupcakes and lollipops, bro. But, you know, in, in a way, though, the way they explained it, it's also very right for the not to make the doctor do it. Because... You're telling me that on a planet with kids, the doctor would just say, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think I think he would sooner die himself than kill anybody, you know, at the, at the cost of, he wouldn't kill, he wouldn't kill whoever's on that planet to save the entire universe. It's not the... It's not a case of the needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few or nothing. Right. To, to the doctor, everybody matters. And if one soul died, then it wasn't worth it. So. Then what do we get, bro, at the end? We got a little bit, a little Tom Baker at what, the end. What do, we, what do we get at the end? Well, <coughs> just to go back real quickly from the quality eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, real quick, because I never weighed in on it. Just... I can remember watching like that whole climax with them radioing in the freaking uh, the Galifrey console. Just that whole ending sequence. It was just like just mesmerizing, man. I I saw the whole thing with my eyes glued to the computer screen. Lights out. Everything was dark in the room. It was like a movie theater, and it was watching. And then then the doctors come, dude. It's like there, there you are. All our fears, all our fears taken care of right there. Because so many people, dude, so many of our buddies, they were sweating bullets. They better not diss the classic doctors. They better get their due. They better, 
you know, this and that and the other. Boom. Even Eccleston, dude. Even Eccleston. Even Eccleston. And then you got, I mean, and then Capaldi comes. Just those two eyes, dude. Not even saying yeah. a word. The first, yeah. what an icon. And now months later, what an iconic image that has become. Mm-hmm. What, that's like his, that, that's going to be his signature moment. The look. It's going to define his career. Like just, just that signature brooding stare. Not even having to say a word. Mm-hmm. What good yeah. acting that was, just by that expression. That was I, I think, probably. I think out of the whole thing, seeing Capaldi in it excited me a lot because we heard some things, and I know we heard. I know I heard that Tom Baker was probably going to be in it or whatever, but I was not expecting to see Peter Capaldi in it at all. I was hoping. I know we talked about it, like, oh, wouldn't it be cool, blah blah blah. But that was cool to see him in it, man. Yeah. Like, you know what? You want to top the whole thing off? Well, cool, man. They're all, they, we can yeah. always argue. Yeah, they could add it this or that or this. But I think for what it was, it was awesome. And um, Tom Baker well, at the end and, was really and we, cool. And not only, not only that, but they gave us just a slight hint of Christopher Eccleston in the 50th with with the regeneration. Yeah. Just, they, didn't, yeah. they didn't even have to do that much, but they threw it in. Yeah. Because Moffat cares that much. So thank all you, right. Moffat. Oh, love you for that. But yeah, to get to the final end, and I'm sorry I dragged out for so long because it's all they cover in those last few minutes, dude. I know, but, I know. But the curator, man, mm-hmm. just that whole scene. Take it away, Mike. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't even know. There's really not really anything I can say except for excellent, man. Excellent. Well, like, bravo. Well, just, it, was, it was cool, just, man. Like, I, I his could, little bit, his retire. little bit, you know, yeah. his little bit where he said, you know, basically, oh, he could choose a fit, you know what I mean? Like he could choose a face, he, like he kind of, he kind of made it like, okay, could this be the doctor in the future, or you know what yeah. I mean? Because I don't know, I kind, I like how it left you, dude. It, it kind of a cool feeling, like, oh wow. And then bam, I mean, not only that, we're seeing Tom Baker, like, yep. In the episode, you know, so and yeah, he I looks keep... like Tom Baker, like with the exception of the wider hair and the older, you know, he aged, of course. But that that was Tom Baker, Tom Baker. such a such a, a voice to him. Um, it, he still has that voice, man. That's just like wow. Yeah. But yeah, I I was nothing but thrilled and happy to see Tom Baker at the end. I thought that was just the icing on the cake and the cherry and everything, man. That was cool, man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely loved it. Now let's now let's recap, okay? Now we talked about pretty much all the um, multi doctor stories. We'll start with you. Just you know, what now? Which one? Which is one of your favorites? One of my favorites, which is different from my absolute favorite, but I, I think I have a special place in my heart for Time Crash. Okay. For the simple fact that, hey, it's between them two. It was a nice little love letter to that time period. Showing right. that in the cla- it was the first time the classic Doctor had appeared in the newer series. Okay. No. So I can see that. But my absolute favorite, dude, the 50th. The 50th because it blew everything away. It was everything that the previous multi Doctor stories tried to be. Yeah. On a grander scale, involving everybody. And whether or not you'll get, oh, you could be nitpicking at all. They shouldn't have used archive footage for the class doctors. They should have just gotten them. But I don't think that would have worked that way, dude. I don't think it would have worked in that sense. Well, those are two great picks. Now, as as me, I mean, I love them all. I love all the stories. Uh, but I think for me, my personal, my favorite, I like, I think I've seen the most. It's probably the three doctors, man. The whole Omega story, I thought he was a great, great villain, man. And I hope he does. I know a lot of our buddies also hope he does. You know, he did make a a, a little return back in, a, in the fifth doctor uh, era. But uh, I would love to see him make a reappearance somehow. So the three doctors is definitely my favorite. Although I love them all. But that one and... Uh, 
a close second since you picked two would be the five doctors, man. And I want to see a Raston Warrior robot, uh, you know, in a current episode. I think they should at least, because I don't, like, it seemed like a, that was one thing. Now, that was the third doctor and Sarah Jane, I think, that were coming up on him. And he's like, the doctor looked like scared of him, man. He's like, like basically, we got to go another way, man. You know what I mean? So I want to see this Raston Warrior robot make a reappearance in a uh, future episode yeah. along with Omega too, definitely. But that's pretty much that guys. <coughs> uh, that was pretty much our picks on the, uh, you know, multi-doctor stories. If you guys uh, wanna... Wait a second though. Where, where did you say the 50th rank for you? They're all so close. Dude. It's, I like them all dude. You know, yeah. I, so there's not one I don't like. I don't with know. the exception of the mentions and time. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but you know, fifty is. I'd probably if if I would have to go in an order, I guess my next one would be the two doctors. Then I'll pick. Then I would pick the fiftieth. Mm -hmm. You know, but still, I think they're all great, man. Great. And and we we say the two doctors because we have a soft spot for six, and you know. Yeah, and it, that's the two doctors has some funny scenes in it too. If you never, if you guys never get a chance to see it, if you, you know, take take a look at it. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. That's our, you know, our picks on, you know, that's our talk about the, uh, um, multi-doctor stories. Uh, you know, and that, thank that, you, Fez, man. Yeah, thanks, Fez, man. man. If you guys want to, uh, you know, give us some other topics of Doctor Who to talk about here, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. I do want to give a shout out. Also, I want to start, I'm going to start leaving some links on our videos to some of our friends, uh, channels. So. You guys we're, can, not all, uh, we're not always affiliated with them, but they're good guys. Well, yeah, I mean, they're just, you know, pe other people that we watch or, you know, we're friends yeah. with or whatever, but definitely, you know, shout shout outs to them guys. So I'm going to, uh, I'll shout out to Matrix Lord 212 out there. He runs the real Whovians. We appear, you know, once in a while on there. Uh, we love you, Matrix. Definitely. We love all the guys, over, you know, over there. Uh, so we'll leave a link below. Check that out. You know, Sammy Carter, another great guy. He loves Doctor Who. He does a ton of Doctor Who. I don't, you know. Find um, those missing episodes, Sammy. Find he's on, them. He's on the hunt for the missing episodes. You know. Then we got uh, well, Doctor Freedom. I mean, he does. He gives us everybody the news daily, so that's cool. Thank you, Freedom, for that. Yeah. You know, David Aston's Doctor Who radio show, and uh, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Yeah. So definitely shout out to them guys and peace and love to them for being straight edge too. Yeah, man. So check out, you know, check out our buddies out there and uh, yeah, just please leave some comments below. Give us some ideas. I mean, this is going to be for our doctor who talk, but we're going to do other sci-fi talk, other television talk, other, we're going to talk some cartoons. Now I did episodes. hear that a fellow viewer of ours, uh, a Mr. Jacob Mails wanted us to do a, uh, video on the series What's Up On It I'm which you've been telling me about. Oh really? No, okay. All right. Well yeah. Maybe we'll do that that yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we're gonna do other shows and stuff. So yeah. All right, just keep a look out guys. Thanks for watching us. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you. Thank you for when you had a choice of entertainment, you picked the scab. Thank you. Peace and love and Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Yeah.